It is Wednesday, September 21st, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Wednesday puzzle today, which means perhaps a little bit of a step up in difficulty from the approachable Monday and Tuesday puzzles we've solved so far this week. And I know I've said this a few times recently, but it really is particularly true today. I am somewhat pressed for time. So hopefully the step up in difficulty isn't too dramatic and we can make it through this themed Wednesday puzzle without too much difficulty. Speaking of that, this uh, step up in difficulty has been brought to us by Overfull Hitbox, Joseph Schwalbach, and as always, the inestimable hood monster, the invaluable Timothy Mark, and the indomitable Shulmaster, as always, of course. And thank you to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Self Patreon campaign, for bringing us this video, for directly supporting this channel. I do very much appreciate their support. So thank you so much to them and to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign at any level. If you do so, you can, as a benefactor, get the Daily Self Let's Check the Crosses mug, but at any tier, get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. So um, please consider that if you're interested. And thank you to everybody who's done so already. It keeps this channel going. And do join the Daily Self Discord chat server. There's a link in the description field underneath the video, where you can also find a link to the Patreon, which is patreon.com slash daily solve. And uh, do subscribe to the YouTube channel if you've been enjoying these videos. All right. Let's get on to the puzzle, shall we? This is a Wednesday crossword, as noted, constructed by Matthew Stock, who's done around a dozen puzzles, I think, maybe more than, a few more than that, edited, as always, by Will Shorts. And let's start solving. So up there, something's up there. What, it's airy or it's high? I'm not sure. Let's look at the, oops. Oh, it's doing this again. It's not saving my, my space bar behavior. I can't stand that. Uh, pressing the space bar should toggle between across and down. Thank you. Okay, so down is a fashion line, a hem maybe? Line of a, you know, of a dress or, a, or an any article of clothing really. So up there could be high as guest. And then jaunty words upon departing. I'm off maybe? Actress Watson, Emma Watson is an actress. So there we go. And app with an envelope logo would be Gmail. Here we have, if you complain, you moan, moan, complain, and then emotional inhibitions or hangups. So there we go. Look at that. We've cleaned out that little corner already. So here we have an innate response to a threatening situation. Oh, fight or flight. There we go. Okay. This looks like it'll be the theme. So oh no, fight or flight, sorry. So we're going to have, um, three word phrases maybe, or I'm guessing maybe two word phrases, maybe some of them won't have a linking word um, preposition. And will the second one will be the same as the first word with an inserted letter. And maybe those will be L's or maybe there'll be some other letter, but I think that's the theme. So chimney components are flues. Your chimney has a flue. And some races are heats. That's, that's a term applied to foot races, maybe other kinds of races, heats. Not sure exactly what defines a heat, but it's certainly a phrase I've I've heard used in that context. Sucker. Oh, a patsy. A patsy is a phrase used to de describe somebody who falls for something. Who often, you know, that you'll they'll be subject to a scam or they'll be framed for a crime or something like that. Okay, like some stuffed toys, plush plush toys, perhaps. Let's check the crosses on that to be sure. Acapella parts say could be alto. That's one of the uh, that's one of the women's singing ranges. One of the common uh, lower lower than soprano, for instance. And Odom's Hamilton role. Role. So is it Lamar Odom? I think who played Aaron Burr in Hamilton in the original cast. And like that, if, like that, it ever happen? As if, as if that would ever happen? Please. Uh, legal organization is the ABA, the American Bar Association. And here we have lofty features of many nice hotels. So this is plural. So it's atria, plural of atrium. And then we have kosher is to Judaism as halal is to Islam. So the preparation of food according to the religious strictures of these faiths. And to entertain is to what? 
I don't know. Oh, to allow maybe to entertain an idea to allow. I'm not sure. Apple. No, not that. Apple desktops are iMacs. There we go. So to entertain is to amuse, perhaps. There we go. That'd be it. And whence subway air? The shoot, the subway shoot? Whence subway air? So what is the source of subway air? Uh, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be obvious when I see it, but I don't at the moment. Sworn statements are oaths made in a courtroom, for instance. Tree pose discipline. Um, I'm, this this is this must be yoga. So I guess the tree pose must be. Is it a yoga asana, perhaps? Um, one of the yoga poses. Uh, seems like it would be. Oh, stop it, fellas! You guys. Oh, stop. Uh, whence subway air? Okay, what is? Oh, great. Oh, I see. Right. This means. I think this means in New York City, not in the subway itself. I was thinking of the rush of air that can come through the tunnel of a subway uh, that's sort of being pulled by the, the, the train itself, but, um, or pushed or however that, that works, displaced. Um, but um, no, I think this means particularly New York City, I think is seems to have this more than other cities I know, uh, grates through which air is vented from the subway. And so that's what that is, I think. Two in a row could be oars. So in a rowboat, you could have two oars. And of course, the question mark here indicates some kind of pun or wordplay. So uh, that indicates that row does not mean two in a row, meaning two in subsequent order, but rather two in a rowing operation. Bryce Canyon's state. Bryce Canyon is at a, I think it's a national park, not a state park. And that is in the state of Utah. Here we have debris left by a phoenix. Um... Firebird ash rising from the flames. And here we have anti up for participation. Oh, pay to play. Right. Okay. So look at that. It's another three word phrase with a with the little linking preposition in there. And we it's got an L again. So that does seem to be the pattern. It does seem to be L. Maybe this will be something like taking an L, like l taking a loss. Maybe that'll be something, maybe what the theme it will be. Um, the P, uh, the P of PBR, that's Pabst Blue Ribbon um, Beer. Apple Picker. Apple Picker. So obviously this looks like picking the fruit, but perhaps it refers to Apple Computer in some way. What would that mean? Not sure. Migratory Seabird would be a turn. Turn, I feel as though this used to be a pretty common bit of crossword ease. Don't see it as much recently. It's worth, worth remembering. And so is this, clearly. Metamorphosis poet, Ovid. Now, this is the third time we've seen Ovid this week, I'm pretty certain. So look at that. Ovid. It's all over these crosswords this week. Rollerballs, e.g. That is a brand of ballpoint pen. So rollerballs are pens. And apple picker, oh, Eve, right. So it was someone who picked an apple in a literal sense in the biblical story anyway. Uh, Eve. Okay. Channel for politics. This is C-SPAN, which is, I think, mainly shows congressional footage of sort of congressional sessions in the United States. C-SPAN, cable cable network for political coverage of a particular kind. One's providing cheap trills. So here we have, obviously, this is evoking the phrase cheap thrills, but we have the question mark and we have the alternative spelling of cheap, C-H-E-E-P, which indicates a bird cheaping. And then trills sounds like bird song to me. So what is this? I mean, I mean, songbirds or something like that, but I don't know. Parakeets? Oh, that fits. Okay. Maybe it is parakeets. Let's check the crosses. To cancel is to, I don't know, part of a neural connection. An axon? You have those going on in your brains, axons and neurons and all that sort of thing forming neural connections. So to cancel, oh, so to cancel something is to exit. And the spell of gospel, in etymologically, how oh, interesting. So, right. So, uh, whence does spell derive or come? Uh, hmm. I don't know. I don't know. News? Is it something like good news? Maybe. 
There's a phrase often used in the Christian context. Ship's front could be the prow. Oh, maybe it is. So, um, deeps. Yeah, okay, it looks like it is. Gospel, gospel, okay. So, deeps. I mean, it could be the, you know, the ocean deeps, the murky deeps. Uh, oh, maybe it is, just simply oceans. There we go. Uh, ocean, the deep. Uh, bench press muscles informally are pecs, pectorals, and waterproof sealant is caulk, maybe, used in tiling and sort of that sort of thing because it's waterproof. They take advantage of others, might be users, they take advantage of people. And like blue lobsters, they're presumably rare. I think I've heard that before. To nosh on something would be to eat it. Um, you could you could nosh on some kosher food, um, because I think nosh is of Yiddish origin. And to adjudicate is to try, maybe, as in a case, a trial in court, to adjudicate, to try a case. Let's check if that, yes. River with a myth mythical ferryman would be the River Styx. So you're ferried across the River Styx in the underworld of Greek myth. And the word with safe or same would be sex. So safe sex or same sex, that looks right. So let's finish this off. We have some races are strings. Springs? Hmm, not sure about that one. We had the heats. Oh, and it's crossing that. Look at that. We had some races in 20 down and some races crossing it in 37 down. What about this? Musician Anderson dot something. <laughs> no idea. Sorry if you do. I don't. Um, I wish I did. Okay, thus is and so. And wrench or gouge is a tool. There you go. So, oh, some races are sprints. Sorry, that's embarrassing. How did I not jump to sprints? Musician Anderson Dot. Ah, still don't know. I, I don't think I'm going to know because I don't recognize that that Dot character being someone's, you know, part of someone's stage name. So I think I'm going to have to keep going. Oh, here we have ACDC album after Highway to Hell. Okay, well, it, back in black. I wouldn't have known that that sequentially followed... Highway to Hell in the ACDC oeuvre, but um, but there we go. It fits our three, it fits our theme. We have back turning to black. So this is going to be taken out shortly. What is, yes, here we go. Here's our revealer. Accept defeat informally or what the last, yes, here we go. Or what the last words in 1924 and 49 across do vis-a-vis -vis the first. They take an L. There we go. To accept defeat informally, to take an L, to take a loss. Which is a phrase that's gained a huge amount of currency in the last, I don't know, five to ten years? Seemingly out of nowhere. It was suddenly there. And it was everywhere. Patronize a tattoo parlor would be... Ink up or something? I'm not sure. Abuela's grandchild... Um, well, an, ab an abuela would be a... Um, a grandmother, I guess. Um... In Spanish, you often hear people talk about their abuela in a sort of, um, in an affectionate way. Is it used? Is it used ever informally to someone who isn't liter literally your grandmother in the way that auntie is? Often, I'm not sure. Anyway, let's let's look at this. Worst possible soccer score would be nil, I suppose. I mean, that's straightforward enough. Um. And Noir's counterpart in a game of les échecs. So um, that's how you say chess in French. And uh, Noir's counterpart would be, well, this is funny because it looks, with the crosses we happen to have, it looks like black here, which is one of the colors in chess, obviously. But uh, in French, white would be blanc. So that would be the counterpart of Noir, which is black. So there we have that. And early Jurassic, e.g., an epoch, I guess. Uh, an era, um, early Jurassic period um, of Earth. And then Disease Research Organization, the National Institute of Health. And Soviet satellite launched in 1957 is Sputnik. So here we have Abuela's grandchild is Nieto. Um, so what is that? Does that just mean a grandchild? I'm sorry, I actually don't know. 
I'm not precisely certain the meaning of that word. Um, yeah, sorry about that. I really do need to learn more Spanish. Uh, here is improvises during a jazz performance, scats, scat singing would be what this refers to, the kind of nonverbal syllabic sort of improvised singing. And then, okay, still don't know what that is. Feathery accessories could be feather boas, perhaps. And Bantu languages, sorry, Bantu language with click consonants. Oh, is it Xhosa? X-H-O-S-A? Pretty sure that is a Bantu language, but let's check the crosses because I'm not, I wouldn't want to be overconfident. Supervision, oh, X-ray maybe. So seeing through things. And a roll call call would be here, here present in the roll call. Mardi Gras King. Uh, I'm not sure actually what this refers to. Is it Rex? I mean, that's a king. I mean, Rex means king. Um, but so does Ray. Um, and probably Ray with an I as well in some language. What about this? Verb that sounds like its second letter. Verb that sounds like its second letter R, the verb R, you are. R, of course, sounds like R. <laughs> a pointless thing to say. Okay is yes or yep, maybe. Let's look at this. Big sound producers of the 1980s. Ah, boom boxes, right. Uh, okay, so Rex was the king. Mardi Gras king, Rex, and then okay is yes and yes. Big sound producers of the 1980s, boom boxes. Um, you know, big sort of... Uh, portable stereos, portable battery-powered stereo systems. Um, very emblematic of the 1980s. Uh, like Radio Rahim in um, Do the Right Thing, the uh, Spike Lee film would be a, uh, a sort of, I don't know, like the, he, that, that's the sort of most classic boombox carrying guy you can sort of, sort of imagine. It's a very illustrates the time perfectly, the sort of fashion and everything about everything about that whole thing. Okay. Cause for much boasting. Um, not sure. And then no blank Bob, no, hmm, not seeing these things. Potato and pea pastry would be a samosa from in, from Indian cuisine. So here we have musician Anderson dot pack, I guess. I hope that's how you pronounce it. And, um, yeah, I don't think that rings a bell, so I'll have to I'll have to look this person up. So anyway, here we have hypes up is Paps up or something. City that's home to the Taj Mahal would be Agra. I should have just looked at these um, earlier. Cause for much boasting, maybe one's ego. And oh no, prob Bob, no problem Bob. Okay, there we go. I guess that's something you might say. And then hypes up is peps up. So that's the crossword. All right, that was not too bad. Uh, we made it through that Wednesday, I think, in a reasonable amount of time. So we had our a very good take an L theme. So this is one where you wouldn't you wouldn't really need to to understand it in order to fill it in because each of these clues was uh, each of these answers was clued perfectly straight. And in fact, there wasn't even any punning going on. These are these are all so often when you get these kind of letters, these themes that deal with particular letters being in words in particular ways. Often you're removing a letter or adding a letter in a way that turns a phrase that already exists as a common idiom or what have you in English into something punny that with a different, with a different meaning. In this case, these are all completely fully formed phrases in their own right. So you wouldn't have needed really to understand anything about the theme in order to solve it. And then even the revealer is clued except defeat informally. So you could you could solve that on its own. But of course, in this case, um, because we understood what was going on with the theme, we sort of suspected what the answer was going to be ahead of time. So that, that was fun. Uh, it's that, 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 That's always something I enjoy is when you can guess at the revealer completely, uh, you know, well in advance without, without having seen the clue itself. And um, it does, it does kind of require a fairly simple theme usually. Well, I guess that's not true. I guess sometimes very complicated themes, they're so complicated and specific that sometimes that can, that can sort of force you to the place. Anyway, I thought this was fun. It was a simple, uh, enjoyable theme that 
who's really used a phrase that's very much in sort of as a high degree of cultural currency, I would say, these days. So um, well done to Matthew Stock for a fairly uh, nice approachable puzzle otherwise, I think. But let me know how you fared. I'm always curious to know. And now let's quickly get through what I think are four um, bits of context and correction from yesterday's puzzle. Oh, five. So here we go. James Dickey says, I'm surprised you didn't know of Kelly Cuoco. She played Penny on The Big Bang Theory. Penny was the proudly blonde bimbo character who over the course of the series was dragged kicking and screaming to the nerd side. Um, that explains why I, I didn't know who she is, I suppose. I've actually never seen The Big Bang Theory, so um, I was not I was not familiar with her, her character or the her name, I suppose. Um, but thank you for the explanation. And then we'll move on to Geo488, who says... Zoom Zoom was definitely Mazda's slogan here in Australia. All right, so Zoom Zoom, uh, something of a global Mazda slogan, not just the United States. Elliot Robinson said, you didn't go back to it, but the clue 10JQKA was looking for ace, the highest possible poker straight, and a royal flush if all the same suit. There we go. That's one of those, one of those sequences that seems so completely baffling if for whatever reason your mind doesn't go to the right place, which mine didn't. 10JQKA, of course, that's listing the face cards in, um, in a, in a, well, not a face card. That's, that's listing the highest value, um, cards in a, in a poker hand. And I just didn't see it for whatever reason. So there we go. It happens in crosswords. Here's another completely baffling thing. Tim Kent says, Alexander, not Arthur, Graham Bell is often credited as the inventor of the telephone. Now that is bizarre. I, I actually remember saying Graham Bell's name yesterday, and I remember saying it as Alexander. And in my memory, I said Alexander, and I know it's Alexander, and I've said and read and heard the name Alexander Graham Bell countless times in my life. And yet, somehow, what came out, apparently, was Arthur. I This is that sort of video brain thing that seems to happen to me, where something that I know, not even in a sort of tenuous way, where I've heard it a couple of times, I, I absolutely know the name of Alexander Graham Bell. And yet, I don't know, this this happens when I'm doing these on video sometimes. It is the strangest thing. So anyway, yes, Alexander Graham Bell. And as Tim Kent uh, continues, as I, as I mentioned, but didn't have the full story around, this was a classic case of multiple discovery. Bell's lawyer and Alicia Gray's lawyer fired pat filed patents for telephones on the exact same day, February 14th, 1876. That's amazing. Others credited with inventing earlier but more rudimentary telephones include Antonio Meucci and Johann Philip Rice. So there we go. That was an even more uh, coincidental situation than I had remembered. Old Footer explains the Chow Chow is a breed of dog from China, famously with a blue tongue. So um, they have a, the, the etymology, by the way, of Chow Chow, I looked up and it is pretty indeterminate. It doesn't seem to be similar to um, the Chinese name for the breed, um, but it was attested, the term Chow Chow was first attested a very long time ago in the mid 19th century. So its origins may have been lost to time to some extent. Anyway, Old Footer explains, they have a slightly difficult reputation temperamentally, definitely one man dogs and standoffish, needing careful training. And I think that was it. I think that's all we had. So thank you so much for joining me for this edition of The Daily Solve. And I'll be back tomorrow for the Thursday puzzle when it really may step up more noticeably in difficulty. That's Thursday's that, that day when it gets tricky and when we have often a particularly complex or involved or maybe even just creative theme, but usually they're, they're a bit trickier in some way. So I hope you'll join me for that. Uh, but until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Wednesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.